fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today I have my July wrap up for you guys. Overall a pretty solid reading month. I flew through the first half of my books and then I kind of hit a wall um, the second half of the month and I really struggled to get through some of the books I was reading. Um, I did read most of the books I wanted to. There were one, um, two that I didn't get to because they're part of a series. I started that series and then I ended up deciding I wanted to hold off on those books. I did DNF one, which I talked about in my ABC author challenge video, um, but I added on two more for that one. And then there's one that I keep rolling over and again, I just didn't get to it. Um, and so yeah, that one I think is just going to go back on the shelf for a little while until I'm in a better place to get to it, even though I still really, really want to continue that series. Um, but overall, solid reading month. I did read 17 books, and with some of the chunkers I had, it ended up coming out to 5,967 pages. Uh, I just started keeping track of pages. I've never done that before. But... All books are not created equal, so you can read, you know, some chunky books and have less number of books, but more pages, or you can read a bunch of smaller books and so you have more books, um, but less number of pages. So I do want to kind of start keeping track of my stats a little bit better. I've never really been interested in that before, and I'm not going to go into too much detail like genre and whether it's male, female author and such like some people do, which is great for them, but I am interested in, in seeing how many pages i read each month. Um, I think that's one stat that I am in per particularly interested in. Uh, so I definitely am going to be doing that. And I think going forward, I'm also going to try to keep track of the genre better because um, I have some plans for next year that revolves around genres. And so I want to keep track of that a little bit better just so I can see, you know, what I'm reading as far as genre goes. So I guess let's go ahead and jump into it. Kind of a long intro. As always though, before we get into it, if you'll remember to like this video, it does really help out the channel. And then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on a thing. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So first up, we're going to be talking about the last three books that are part of the Tiger's Curse Saga. I read the first three last month and just absolutely enjoyed it. I binged read those first three. Um, I had to order these so they ended up, I had to wait for them and so I started reading the other reads that I needed to prioritize. Otherwise I probably would have binged these last month too. And originally I was just going to read Tiger's Destiny which is the fourth book in the series um, and then hold off on these other two and read some of the books I needed to prioritize. But again I just love the series so much I ended up binging them. So I ended up reading all three. This one is chunky. This one is um, let's see here 826 pages. So definitely a chunky book but of course then you have this tiny little novella that's just over 100 pages. Um, so kind of balanced out. Absolutely loved Tiger's Dream. That was my favorite of the series by far. The whole series though I really really enjoyed. Um, it did have that kind of uh, YA like angst drama kind of situation going on but I just ate it up. Um, you have 300 year old princes that were cursed to be tigers and so in the first four books they're having to go and do these quests and get these gifts in order to break the curse um, and each gift ends up giving them back a certain amount of time to be men um, versus tigers and then in tigers dream it's instead of being told by Kelsey who is the main female um, protagonist you have one of the tiger brothers that is told from his viewpoint um, and then in tiger's promise it goes it's like a prequel and it goes back to the beginning uh, when they first got cursed but it's told um, from Yusubai's perspective um, and kind of her perspective on how they came to be cursed so this is a wonderful series the other three books are already put away or I hold them up to um, but yeah definitely a wonderful series if you like kind of like vampire vi diary vibes 
you know, with like the the two brothers and the love triangle there, um, even kind of Twilight vibes. Uh, these are definitely one I would say give a try because I thought they were. I've never read the Vampire Diary books, but I watched the show. Um, and I just, I really enjoyed how these were done for sure. So those were the first three books I read this month. Just going to set them down here. And then next I read, I stayed on the Indian, um, kind of mythology theme and I read Kai Kei, which of course a lot of people have been reading recently. Um, and this is told from Kai Kei, who is Rama's, um, stepmom in the Ramayana. And she's the one that ends up banishing him, and that's her role in that that epic. It's told from her perspective, uh, and overall, I really, really enjoyed this one. I liked how it was done. I wish it had a little bit. It has like a strong, solid magic throughout, and the gods and such are real and play a point a part. But it feels more political, um, and so I wish the the gods and the that magic. Um, had been more of the focus than like the political stuff, but really, really enjoyed this one. Like I really liked Kai Kei as a character. Um, and so I'm really interested in reading the Ramayana now. Not sure when I'll get to it, but I'm interested in reading that after reading this, just so I can kind of compare her character in that with how I, I saw her in this one. So this is definitely a really good read. Um, I do do recommend it for sure so next we have some lighter reads which I needed for sure um and first I got Finlay Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano I love this one I'm not a cozy mystery type of person um I don't enjoy them I think they're over the top and I always just have a hard time reading them you know you have these people that have no qualifications and are solving these murder mysteries. But the way this one was done, like, I just really enjoyed it. It was funny. Um, kind of the situations she got herself into reminded me of my sister. So I really, really enjoyed this one. And I definitely want to pick up the next one, the next two, of course. But we got to start with the next one first, uh, which I think is Finley Donovan's Knock Some Dead. Um... And so, yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed this one. It's, it's a good one. Even if you're not a typical, like, cozy mystery person, you might give this one a try because, like I said, I'm not, and I really, really enjoyed this one. So, um, basically, it follows, um, Finley, of course, names on the thing, but it follows her, and she's a writer, and somebody overhears her talking about the plot for her next book and mistakes her for a killer for hire. Um, and then, you know, things go crazy from there. So really, really good. Next, we have some Cinderella retellings. Um, so first up, we have If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. This one was pretty good. I liked it overall. I liked the plus size wrap. Um, and you basically, you know, it's, it's kind of Cinderella inspired. So she has her stepmom and her two stepsisters but basically her stepmom runs this dating show reality show and so cinder uh cindy rather finds herself on the show um and developing you know a relationship with with the the guy the lead um but because she's plus size she faces some struggles and such and overall i thought it was a cute little you know, romance, like contemporary romance. Um, I did like the plus size rep. There was one thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and that was kind of Sydney's relationship with food, um, the way it was presented, but overall a very cute, solid, you know, just quick and fun read for sure. So then we have Cinder, um, which is book one in the Lunar Chronicles. I wasn't sure going into this because I've heard mixed things. Like, some people love it, some people don't. I am one that loved this book. Like, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's kind of like this sci-fi Cinderella-inspired read. Um, and so you have Cinder, who is a cyborg, um, and she ends up kind of getting involved with Prince Kai and there's these lunar people who are ready to go to war with Earth. And so she plays a major part in stopping that. 
The only thing I didn't like was how it ended. It definitely ends on, on a cliffhanger. Not only even a cliffhanger, it just ends and it doesn't feel resolved. Like, cliffhangers are fine. I, I don't mind them. But this one just didn't feel resolved. Like, it didn't feel like that it was the end of the story. Um, and so, and the next one is Scarlet, which is more about, like, Little Red Riding Hood. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious how that's gonna come across. Like, does it start off, like, where Cinder's at? Or does it start off with... Little Red Riding Hood and you're gonna have to wait to see what happens from the end of this book um so I definitely want to get Scarlet definitely planning on getting that and then continuing the series but we'll see when I'm able to do that but really really enjoyed this one definitely worth a try um you may not like it but it's it's worth a try so the next is one that my grandma had given to me and it's called Tell Me the Truth um by Kirsten Modulin. This one, there were parts I enjoyed, but overall, um, I, I wish the pacing and the plot had been a little bit better, but I did like the premise of it. So you have uh, Edith, and she finds photos of another woman on her husband's phone, and so it's her, you know, he kind of gaslights her and, and makes her think that she's crazy, um, and so it's kind of her trying to find proof that he really is cheating on her and such, um, and that she's not crazy. But that's, like, the bulk of the story, and then kind of, like, the exciting part of the book is, like, the last 50 pages. So I wish it had been flopped around a little bit, um, and done better, but I did really, really enjoy it overall. Um, it's, well, not really, really, but it's just a solid read. And sometimes you just need that. Like, I'm not always looking for those four-star, five-star reads that are absolutely amazing. I just want a simple read that I'm just going to enjoy in the moment and then move on with my life, which this was definitely one of those. So then next up, we went ahead and read the 13th book in the Dresden Files ghost story which I talked about this yesterday. Um, briefly, I tried not to give any spoilers, uh, so it was very brief and to the point. I didn't like this one. Um, not going to lie, you can kind of see more of my thoughts on it in yesterday's video if you'd like. But yeah, this was not one. I would have DNF'd it if I wasn't so invested in the series, honestly. Um, definitely didn't like it, but it's part of the series, and I'm working my way through. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll, we'll continue to work on that. Next, we read um, one of my 25 Days of Bookmas books, and that's Paint the Wind by Pam Minas Ryan. And this one I actually really enjoyed. It's more like of a middle grade. There were some things I didn't like. Like, I didn't particularly like the main character. Like, she lies a lot, um, which I didn't like. But it, you understand why based on, like, her grandmother and such. And I talked about this one recently as well, along with the other two that I'm going to be talking about next. Um, the video came out on Friday, so you can check that out. But yeah, Paint the Wind was a good solid read if you were, you know, like horses and you're looking for just a middle grade read. This is definitely one. Um, even as an adult, like, the story was enjoyable enough. It was a little bit outlandish, but, I mean, that's kind of the nature of things with some of these horsey books so um overall really enjoyed it and it has you know the BLM and the Mustang Roundup aspect so which is always I think important to talk about and yeah I really enjoyed this one it was solid it was a three star but it was a solid read and I did like again enjoy it in the moment so then we have um my Nora Roberts read for the month, and that is Genuine Lies by, again, Nora Roberts. But this one, overall, a solid read. It did give it four stars. Not my favorite Nora Roberts book, though. There were some grammar issues and such, especially in the beginning of the book, and it was a little bit rough. Um, and then it kind of smoothed out, and it seemed more true to what I know Nora Roberts reads like. Um, but you have Eve, and she's, like, the last of the big movie goddesses, and then she wants to tell her memoirs, and so you have, um, Julia, who is a biographer, coming in, and of course there's threats and such, because Eve has a lot of dirt on a lot of different people. Um, a good solid romance, I did enjoy it, like I said, four stars, but compared to some of her other works... Um, this one fell a little short for me, but again, you can see more of my thoughts 
if you go check out Friday's video. So, and then we read a very R-rated spicy one, and that's Mandarin Orange Sunday by Angelique Duran. Um, this basically just follows this woman's, like, um, sexual exploit, uh, essentially. And I will say for this one, and genuine lies, there is trigger warnings for abortion, um, and kind of sexual abuse and such. So keep that in mind if you're going to be reading this, but this one is definitely already like definitely for adults. Um, very like that's the forefront of the book is sex and the like smutty, like explicit scenes aren't as much, but sh she talks about it like, all through the book. Like, that's the forefront of the book. Um, and surprisingly enough, this really did hook me, because she ends up falling in love with a married man, and so it's more kind of their journey, and then her other sexual exploits and such, and kind of how they shaped her and such is kind of the background going on, um, but the forefront is her and, and this man. So, it kind of has this rock star element, this cowboy element, this French element. Um, and so, yeah, overall, I really, really enjoyed this. This also got four stars, but just be, you know, mindful of the trigger warnings going into this one for sure. And then next is one I haven't actually read yet. I'm going to be reading this weekend. Um, so by the time you see this video, I'll be hopefully done with this one. Uh, and that's where the crawdads sing by Delia Owens. Uh, and this one I'm going to be reading and doing discussion questions on. And so that video will be coming out um, sometime in the next week or so. So you can keep an eye out for that. I'm counting this one though because I will be reading it. Um, there's no doubt in my mind I'm going to do that this weekend. So this is the last book I have. And I know I'll get this done. So I'm counting that one even though I haven't actually read it at the time of filming. Uh, and then I have three that I did not get to. So I did start, this is the other two books for my 25 Days of Book Miss. I did start The Serpent Bride. I read about 66 pages um, and then decided I just wanted to hold off on this series. I was intrigued and definitely hooked. Um, and so I do want to read it. It's just I want to wait till I'm kind of in a better mind space to read it. It is kind of a complex, you know, fantasy uh, and yeah, I just want to hold off. I want to get the third book and just kind of binge them. And when I'm in a better place and have more time to do so. So really want to get to these. It's just, I'm holding off for now. And then the other one is one that I just keep, it keeps getting rolled over. I'm not going to roll it over again, though. I said if I didn't get two this month, I wasn't going to roll it over. And I would have, like, I was in a really good position at the midpoint of the month and then, like I said I just kind of hit a wall I really struggled to get through ghost story um and then I struggled with some of my other reads just because I wasn't feeling well and so I decided you know what if I can't get to this one this month I'm just gonna hold off I still really want to get to the series you know there's two more books I read the first two and I really enjoyed the first two they're still very vivid in my mind it's just this is very very dense so it's not only long it's dense um, and this one is about 750 pages. Um, and like I said, the words are packed in there and it takes a lot. You have to be present while you're reading it, um, in order to get the most out of it. And so I'm just going to have to hold off on this one. But even so, like I said, I read 17 books total, um, or I will have once I read Where the Crawdads Sing and it equals out to 5,000. 967 pages and that doesn't include the 66 pages that I read of the Serpent Bride um if I DNF or stop a book I don't include that in the my page count I'm not planning to anyway like I said I just started doing page counts um but yeah that doesn't count so uh, still a good solid reading month like I'm pretty happy with what I got done um especially some of the the more chunky books like the Tiger's Dream so, uh, I guess that's it for my wrap up though. All right. I just want to jump back on, uh, don't mind the sign. I'm getting ready to do, film my August TBR video, but I realized I forgot to talk about three books. Um, so first I had already put them back on my shelf and just completely forgot about them. I normally keep the books I read in a month off the shelf. 
uh, and that way I can go over them, but I put these back for whatever reason. The first is my O author, which was George Orwell, 1984. I'm replacing that with Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, and like I said, I'm going to be reading that this weekend. Um, but I DNF this. I can't remember. I think I got about like 60 pages in or something. Uh, just did not enjoy it. It's not something I'm going to enjoy, and so I, I DNF'd it because I just, it was too dense and I just didn't want to read it. So, um, and then I wasn't, I didn't realize I had another O author, um, that I had thrifted. Uh, I don't think I have any O authors at all, but let alone that I had thrifted, uh, other than some of my Dear America books, which I had picked up. Um, and this is by Mary Pope Osborne. I had a couple that I could choose from. I ended up choosing this one, which is Standing in the Light, The Captive Diary of Catherine Carey Logan. Um, but I just didn't feel very good about replacing Orwell with this one because, like I said, this is part of the Dear America series, which I'm collecting, and I did thrift it, but I don't know. I just didn't quite feel right um, because I got it because it's Dear America, not just because I, I found it while browsing. Then that's when I realized I had Where the Crawdads Sing, um, which is by Delia Owens, which would work perfectly for my author. Um, but I did, I did read this one anyway and really enjoyed it. Um, and that one's, you know, it's basically this Quaker girl and then she gets kidnapped by some Native Americans. Um, and it's her diary. It's obviously fictional, but based on real events. And then the other one I read for my ABC author challenge was my other N author. This is my second one because I had to go by first name. This is Nancy Starr, Buried Lives. Um, and this one it is Joy and her brother Buddy gets kidnapped when they're kids and she has amnesia and she can't remember what happened exactly. Um, and so now things are starting to come back to her um, and it kind of affects the present for sure. So um, definitely a psychological thriller. Really did actually enjoy this one as well. So I just wanted to jump back on and add those on because I realized I didn't talk about those. I realized I was missing stuff. Um, and so yeah, like I said, I'm getting ready to film my August TBR and you can see that tomorrow. But now I'll go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading everyone. Bye.